The pair make their way through the stars to Obi-Wan's home planet, uncertain of what they will find there. Obi-Wan is nervous for the first time in a long time. What is all of this about his family? Who are they? What have they become? Cal sees the discomfort on his face and breaks the silence. You know, when I was a kid, all of us heard stories about you two. Obi-Wan and Anakin. The stories were legendary. Embellished, to be sure. I don't think so. The battles, the duels, fighting in the face of certain death. How did you do it? Obi-Wan sits silently, thinking on the question, recalling moments of victory and pain. We trusted in the Force, and we trusted each other. What happened to him, Master Skywalker? Obi-Wan shrinks at the question, withdrawing from the conversation. He was killed. A Sith found him and murdered him. Cal leans in. Who could possibly kill Anakin Skywalker? A long pause. Something evil. Cal recounts the story of a great dark warrior he faced years ago in his youth. Someone more powerful than he had ever encountered. This must be the Sith Obi-Wan refers to. Obi-Wan's eyes ignite with pain. Who was this Dark Lord? I didn't know at the time. His entire body is covered in black armor. He moves less like a man and more like an unstoppable android, but he is alive. You can hear his respirator. I think the electronics on his chest are keeping him alive. Whoever he is, he has suffered incredible injuries. I imagine he is in chronic pain, and yet he endures. He must be the same man who killed Anakin. Maybe Anakin is the one who maimed him. He was more powerful than anything I'd ever seen. They call him Vader. A dark recognition washes over Obi-Wan's face. The connection is made. He now knows the truth. Anakin lives. Excuse me. Obi-Wan finds a quiet corner of the transport. Taken with emotion, his eyes water. His friend, his brother, is alive. He can't believe it. What can be done? Nothing. He centers himself and makes his way back to the seat. Are you all right? Yes, yeah, sorry. I just needed a moment. Sad memories. It is announced that they have finally arrived to Stugin. Here we go. Follow me. The pair make their way through a sprawling metropolis, a decadent city. They eventually make their way to an industrial landscape and see a massive build site. That's it, the Kenobi shipyard. The pair examine the facility. They see Imperial forces everywhere. They spot workers and laborers of all different ages, ranging from ages 10 to 25, all POWs. They gather as many Force-sensitives as possible, ones that never even wanted to become Jedi. So what's the plan? I hadn't really gotten that far yet. I was hoping you might be able to figure out how your family is involved in all of this. Cal, you were raised by the Jedi. You know how it works. I don't have any connection to them. The Jedi took me when I was barely five years old. I have no idea what they are doing, or why they are doing it. Obi-Wan sees an old man from a distance, someone who could only be his father. He is led by a group of Imperial officers. He greets a woman, kisses her, a woman he only assumes to be his mother. Seeing them alive and in the flesh strikes Obi-Wan strangely. He is a soldier of the Jedi Order, a master. He never thought he would see his family again. But either way, the Jedi are gone. These people, these strangers, are all that remain of his origins. I need to think. Let's go back to the inn and figure out how we're going to play this. As you wish, Master. Cal, here? It's just Ben. Obi-Wan and Cal go back to the inn and enter the room. A man already sits in wait. Obi-Wan is startled, draws his lightsaber defensively. A moment passes, then another, and another. 
Obi-Wan looks at Cal. He is calm. Obi-Wan disengages his lightsaber and accepts what's happening. This was a setup. You. The man leans forward and speaks. Hello there, son. <laughs> 